Hello, my lovelies. It's Jess from Stellar Tarot again. And once again, we are situated nicely in front of the fireplace. I absolutely love sitting here to do my filming. Whenever I can, I take the opportunity. Um, I have a mighty pile of stuff that I have been enjoying in November. So I apologize ahead of time if this favorites video is going to be a little longer than normal. I will try to keep my um, enthusiasm about some of the uh, pieces into a concise uh, manner, but if you guys have been a subscriber for me for longer than five minutes, you probably know that I am a wordy person and that's not always easy or possible. So. Buckle in, let's sit down and um, if you don't already have a cuppa, I recommend pausing the video for a moment and going to get one. All right, so I think what I'll do is for the people who are just here for the spiritual goodies is I'll get those out of the way first. That way you don't have to be here for the rest of the video. So first I'm gonna show you the crystals I have been working with a lot. This is a blue or green <clears throat> uh, chalcedony, chalcedony, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, and it came in my November mini moon box and I instantly latched onto it. It was one of the uh, crystals that was cited as being really good for helping you to release things that no longer serve you. And I really feel like this stone has in fact helped me to do this. November really ha um, has been quite a busy month for me, um, quite industrious, and um, this little gem I really feel has let me release things like fear and has kept me from feeling like I'm held back by it. Um, I also have this beautiful piece which I, um, I showed in a vlog video recently and I picked it up. Um, at a crystal shop near me when we were with our friends who are out here from Germany. And so this is an N-hydro uh, agate. And N-hydro means that there's water trapped inside it. Um, I could get my phone out and get the, the flashlight going behind it and try to shake it to show you, but it would be really hard to pick it up on camera. So you'll just have to trust me. This is in fact an N-hydro crystal. I don't know why I have felt drawn to it the way that I have, but this sucker has been on my bedside table or under my pillow pretty much every night since I bought it, and I don't see that stopping anytime soon. The incenses I've been burning a lot of have been Night Queen, which you guys probably know um, by now. Uh, this is by Hem, and this is one that I associate very closely with the Morrigan. So whenever I'm doing ritual for her, or if I am doing uh, readings that are dedicated to her, then I will usually burn this incense. Um, I have done a few of the messages from the Morrigan readings this month, and this was the incense that I burned every single time I did one. Um, another uh, incense that I've been burning is um, the Virgin Mary incense and this is by um, the manufacturer is called N. Ranga Rao and Sons Exports. It says it's made in India which a lot of um, incense is. I really have found this one to be a comforting and soothing fragrance to have with me. And indeed, um, this is an incense that I often burn when I am doing uh, Mother Mary oracle readings as well. So this has been a lovely little companion to that. Uh, decks. This month have been few and far between the ones that I have worked with. The one I've been working with the most ever since I got it has been the Marigold Tarot. I don't think this will come as a shock to any of you if you saw me unboxing it. Um, watching Kellyanne Maddox unbox it a few months ago, it was like watching a love affair unfold before my eyes. And when I managed to score this sucker in a trade um, this month, I have to say I was equally excited um, when I got it in my hands. This is one of those cases where <clears throat> 
I did my research beforehand and I had a feeling I would really, really like this deck. Um, and then when I got it in my hands, it felt like I was coming home. I'm not going to jump ahead and say that this is like my soul deck, but guys, this could be a real contender for it. I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love, and that's all I'm going to say right now. <clears throat> Another deck that I've been working with a bit more has been the Antique Anatomy Tarot. This is the Ephemera edition. Oh, by the way, the Marigold Tarot is by Amrit Brar, and the Antique Anatomy Tarot is by Claire Goodchild. Um, She's the same creator as the Oracle of Oddities, uh, which I have the third edition of, still looking for editions one and two. If anyone would like to trade or let me purchase, please contact me. My email address is always below. Um, this one has been a bit of a slow burn deck, shall we say. Definitely wanted to get the original Antique Anatomy Tarot, never end up getting my hands on it. Um, so I ended up purchasing this one as soon as it became available. Seeing the comparison shots between this deck and the original, I am happier that I have this one. I'm glad that my money was well spent only buying the one. However, it is Marseille style, and I do sometimes find that challenging because I like to read tarot intuitively. And so I definitely um, have had a harder time warming up to using this deck. That being said, when I do use it, it's wonderful and it's beautiful and um, I am very happy that I've purchased it. <clears throat> Third deck that I have been loving has been the Tarot Muka. Now, I purchased this deck a few months ago with the idea that it would be perfect for relationship spreads and for things like uh, spreads for self-love. Um, I haven't used it a lot unless those particular types of readings have come about. It's one of those decks where I didn't feel like I needed to really work with it heavily on its own first before I could put it into circulation with my other appropriate for readings decks that I do for clients. Um, I'll just show you a few images briefly. It's one of those ones where I felt like it was just out there ready to roll, um, just like a Rider Waite Smith. Um, there's, it's really only the artwork style that has really changed much in comparison to a Rider Waite Smith. So the um, imagery I really felt was just a little bit more romantic and pretty looking uh, compared to a Rider Waite Smith deck. So I didn't really feel the need to pause and really take a moment with this deck. And um, having worked with it a few times since, I concur with that. Um, with that assessment, if you have been wanting to get a deck that's a little bit more romantic and pretty looking, but you don't want to stray far from the Rider Waite Smith imagery, Tarot Muka is definitely going to serve you well in that regards. The last deck that I've pulled from my collection that I've been working with a bit here and there has been the Connected and Free Alchemist Oracle by Inner Hue. This is the first edition that I have, um, and uh, this deck is always really easy to work with. Um, it's one of those decks that sometimes goes away into my collection for a time, and then it comes out again and it stays for a while out again, pretty much. It stays in circulation um, until I feel the time is right to move on to another Oracle deck. Uh, this it's very clear it's very easy to read there are chakra cards in it too which I really love and it's just beautifully done the the artistry is absolutely lovely and I've <clears throat> ever since I got my hands on it I have never been sad that it's been in my collection it's one of those hard and fast ones that I know is going to be here I mean you're probably going to be burying me with it. Let's let's be honest. This deck is probably going to come to the grave. The last uh, spiritual thing that I have been enjoying as of late have been um, these two particular oil blends that I have picked up over the last few months from my mini moon boxes. Release has been the newest one, but this balance one here I got a couple months back, I think it was. Oh, 
The scent is amazing. Excuse me while I douse myself in this, while I marinate in it. Mm. Balance has been um, a really beautiful fragrance to work with and it smells divine. Now we're going to get into the what I'm going to consider non-spiritual items, but I wouldn't con entirely say that they're non-spiritual. As you guys might know, um, part of how I weave my spirituality is throughout my everyday life. My business is reading tarot for other people and selling other spiritual goodies like my book, like my prayer beads, like the incense blends that I crafted, things like that. So. Um, the things that I do in my everyday life that also go towards my business are also spiritual of a nature to me as well. So some of the things that I'm going to share with you, I would still consider in some ways quite spiritual or at least supportive items to helping me maintain a balance of personal and spiritual slash business life. One of the things that I love to do all day long is drink tea. If I'm not drinking a caffeinated tea in the morning to get me up and ready to go and get the kids out the door and, and out to school, uh, in the afternoon and in the evenings, I will sometimes drink decaffeinated teas or herbal blended teas uh, so that I'm not dehydrating myself with more caffeine, but I'm, I'm still able to enjoy a hot beverage. A few months ago, uh, a friend of mine and I went to a local, um, <clears throat> it's like a British sweets and um, like ephemera and condiment shop, but they also do things like rent out cake pans. They have a whole like cake decorating course in there. There's all this British ephemera like Will and Kate themed things. Just a whole bunch of stuff from jolly old England. And there's also a tea room where you can enjoy tea, high teas. You can enjoy British um, <clears throat> uh, food like pasties and chicken pot pies and all sorts of things. Scones with clotted cream and jam, you name it. So a few weeks ago, my friend and I went there for lunch. Our kids had a professional day from school. So we left our older teenage girls in charge and we headed off to the uh, tea room. And we had some lunch and then we looked around the room after, uh, after uh, looked around the shop after. And I picked up this um, Irish afternoon tea by Bullies. Bou Bullies. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Somebody from England who's watching, correct me if I'm not saying that right. Bewley's maybe? Anyways, um, I'm almost done guys. Like I just have a few tea bags left and then I'm done. It's just slightly different than your average black orange pico tea. And I really, really like it. Um, I can leave it in there for 10 minutes by mistake because I got wandering off to deal with the kid or something. And when I come back and remove the tea bag and add my milk, it still tastes as good as if I just let it steep for the three to five minutes. It doesn't get that really bitter aftertaste that some teas can if you leave them steeping for too long. I really, really like it. And when I finish the box, you bet your bottom dollar I'm gonna go buy another one. I think I'm going to use up a couple of my collection first before I go ahead and purchase another box, but it will end up back in my tea collection in my cupboard at some point. Something else that I have been using and enjoying very much is my new planner. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail right now about this because um, in just a couple of days, I have a full review video coming out about this. But this is the Evo Planner. It's something that I backed on Indiegogo um, and it is uh, now available for like pre-order for the next batch. The thing that's different about this planner is that before you even get to purchase your paper planner, you have to take a mind test to figure out which type of mind or brain you have in order to best get you a planner system that will work for you. Once you finish that test, you then can go ahead and you can purchase copies of the planner, which are set up for 90 days worth of use. And on top of it, you have a companion app that goes with it, 
where you can scan or manually enter in the information for your daily and weekly pages to keep track of the progress that you're making. I have had many types of paper planners over the years and they have all been effective to some degree but never have I been more productive or excited to start my day than I have since I've been using this. I am not a type A person at all. I am spacey. <laughs> I am, shall we say, a creative thinker and I can very easily be losing my train of thought very quickly and off doing other things that are unrelated to what I originally set out to do, even if I have a to-do list set out in front of me. This planner, however, has totally kept me on track. I have been extremely productive getting things like videos and resources ready for my channel and for my business, making sure that things that are priorities get done, and my house is cleaner and better organized. I am getting more fresh homemade meals on the table. I am not getting sucked into knitting or reading black holes and neglecting the things that actually need to get done around my house. <clears throat> Now I'm getting personal work done, I'm getting business work done, I'm spending more time with the kids, I am much more happy and relaxed and less stressed, and on top of it, I'm making time for my physical health, for my, my mental well-being, for fun and for pleasurable activities, and I'm enjoying the process so much more than I ever thought I would be. So please, when that video comes out in a couple days, check it out. And um, I would definitely recommend purchasing this. I will say right now, I went to go and purchase another um, couple of planners during their Black Friday sale. And it looks like on Indiegogo, you can only take advantage of some of the deals that they have if you um, are shipping to the US. So I'm hoping that that's just as they're kind of sorting their pre-order stuff out and that that will be resolved soon. Um, you can also purchase it from their uh, um, from their website, but I think also uh, the shipping costs from there are quite high. So I'm going to keep checking back in. I had no problem getting it shipped to me in Canada when I first ordered it from the original Indiegogo backing campaign. I'm sure they're just working out some kinks, um, but for now I'm, I've only got this one and I really hope that it doesn't go out. All right guys, sorry I had to turn the fireplace off. It was getting just a little bit too warm. Um, before I move on to the rest of my papery goods, I wanted to let you know some of these shows that I have been enjoying over the past uh, month and a bit. So this is a little bit of this has, um, I've been enjoying in October as well, but um, because I started watching them so late in October, I decided not to put it in October's video. Uh, first of all, my husband and I, every season, we watch Survivor. Yes, the original one from the States, with good old Jeff's probes as the host. Um, it is a, I don't even want to say guilty pleasure of mine, because I am so not, I don't feel guilty about it at all. It is the only reality show that I watch, and probably the only reality show that I will ever watch. And I adore it. Um, and I have ever since I watched the first season of it as, um, I would say, like either as a older kid or a young teenager. My husband and I, we watch it every single week without fail. I adore it. I will never not adore it. And I hope that they keep making it for as long as I'm alive. I'm sure that that's not going to be the case, but I will enjoy it for as long as it runs. So Survivor has been a big one for me um, for part of October and for all of November. Um, and then another couple of shows that I've been enjoying. Uh, one of them you can only watch through Amazon Prime uh, TV, unfortunately. But it is called Lore. And each season is only, I think, six episodes long. So they don't take a lot to get through. But each episode is based on a true story um, or true set of events that have happened in real life. Usually part of the story is shrouded in mystery and in, well, lore. We don't always know what has happened by the time the episode has finished. There's usually a dot, dot, dot that happens at the end. You know, the, uh, the mystery continues as it were. And um, lore became available 
midway through October, the second season did, I should say, became available mid-October on Amazon Prime. And I really stretched myself out watching each of the episodes. If you're not a fan of things that can um, be eerie or spooky, you may find that the show is not really for you. It definitely borders on the macabre at times. And um, some of the episodes I definitely found myself starting in the evening and realizing I couldn't watch the rest of it that night. I needed to wait till broad daylight to watch it again. But watch it the next morning, I sure did. And I loved all of the episodes from the second season. And if you like something that's got a little bit of a darker edge to it, I definitely recommend that show. Speaking of darker edges, has everyone else been obsessed with the Sabrina the Teenage Witch on Netflix? Cause I have. So not going to, um, so, so not ever going to stop watching that. I hope it goes on for seasons and seasons as well. I thought it was rather interesting that the um, satanic church is trying to sue them over the use of the Baphomet statue. Um, I don't anticipate this any well for the Satanist church because as far as I'm aware, before the Satanist church as we know it today was actually an established religion, they didn't have exclusive rights to using Baphomet um, as their uh, deity. And um, so, yeah, I, I don't anticipate the lawsuit going their way. And I really, really hope that um, Netflix is able to uh, veto that case because I need me some more Sabrina. One season is not enough. Don't you guys pull a firefly on us. <clears throat> The last show that I have been enjoying is also on Netflix and it is called Follow This and it is presented by BuzzFeed. This, this series is really interesting. It looks at a phenomena, something interesting that is happening in our culture today. Something new that is starting to become a thing like toxic masculinity, ASMR, um, the rights of intersex people and the taboo nature of um, plastic surgery in India and all this kind of stuff. And each episode, I think is only about 22 minutes long, roughly. And one of the uh, BuzzFeed journalists spends the entire episode focusing on this one phenomena. And their aim is not necessarily to find out all of the psychology and stuff behind it, nor is it necessarily to find solutions for some of these things if they are problematic. But it's just to start the cogs and the wheels going in your head and to start the thinking, and if it is something that you end up being interested in, to kind of conduct some of your own research and start to have conversations about it yourself and to start to you know, if it's something really important to you, to bring the subject up in your po political circle and get the wheels turning within your own local community. There hasn't been an episode that I haven't enjoyed. Some of them I found the subjects far less interesting to me than others, as I think like any humans with variety of interests will, but I have really been enjoying this series and um, Every time I see that they've put up another um, a, another little section of it, they kind of go in spurts of a few episodes at a time. Um, it's not seasons, I don't think. It's just parts. Every time they put up a new part, I get excited and I sit down and I usually binge watch all of those episodes in a day or two. I actually discovered this show from seeing it posted about on one of my favorite ASMR channels uh, pages on YouTube. She mentioned that she had been featured in the first episode for it and that someone is Maria Gentle Whispering. If you are a person who enjoys ASMR, you probably already know who she is, so I don't have to tell you. And I also wanted to say um, on camera a congratulations to Maria and her husband, Derek, I believe his name is. Uh, they just announced that they are pregnant and they are about um, three quarters of the way there. I think that's fantastic. 
congratulations to both of you. That's wonderful. And I cannot wait to see your fresh faced little baby in a few weeks. All right, moving on. We have the last of our paper products available here and then we're done guys. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is my 2019 self love workbook and planner. I have the, uh, this is from, by the way, blessingmanifesting.com. Again, I've done an entire video dedicated to unboxing and flipping through this. So I'm not going to go into huge detail. I have just finished all of the uh, reflecting on 2018 stuff. And I've only just started getting into the 2019 things. Um, I There are some pages at this point that I skip right off the bat because I'm not going to do them until later. Like the reading I usually do for myself um, closer to New Year's. Um, and some of the things I never will fill out because they're just not things that I use. Like the um, soundtrack page. Music is great and all, it's wonderful, but it's not the first thing that I turn to when I am not feeling so great. And um, it never will be a big priority for me uh, in terms of how I use it for self-expression and things like that. Um, I do find that the pages are set up a fair bit differently than they were last year for the monthly spreads. So I'm going to, as I always do, try to use the monthly spreads initially, um, but I'm a little sad because there's no end of the month reflection like there was last year. There are spaces for each week um, at each page that are just left open for you to do whatever you want with. So I will try to use those spaces to do my reflections with but I do prefer to have them prompted for me. And indeed, it's one of the reasons why I switched to using uh, Dominique's planners as opposed to uh, Leonie Dawson's because when she started diversifying her um, Shining Life workbooks into a workbook and then a planner and a pad and all this kind of stuff, you lost some of the things in the main workbook that were things I really loved, like um, end of the month reflection and things like that. And I didn't want to have to buy multiple products. So I'm going to give this a, um, a shot for the year and see how it is the way that it's set up. Um, but I anticipate myself really hoping for the reflection uh, pages at the end of the month. And so um, I know that Domini watches my videos from time to time, so I hope, Domini, my darling, that you will keep that in mind. Um, I did buy the witch version again this year, um, as I did last year, as you can tell. Um, I do really like having the focus on uh, my spiritual life be the main thing because my business is um, of a spiritual nature. However, I also decided to go to her Etsy shop and purchase the Biz Life um, uh, add-on package for it as well. I'm going to get this sucker um, punched and bound and then put a little cover on it um, at Staples. It, it don't, doesn't cost very much uh, so that it's similar to this so that I can kind of keep them together because otherwise they're loose pages and I will lose them. Now we are at the last section of the video, which is books. I have been doing a lot of reading this month. I'm actually pleasantly surprised how much I managed to read this month, considering that for the first 16 days we had house guests from Germany. So I have been reading a fair bit, um, and part of it is because I'm managing to get my business stuff done and my housework done in a timely fashion, which then leaves me plenty of time to read and, and things like that. So it's been wonderful. The first two books are from the same series, and I managed to finish them both. The Raven King and Blue Lily, Lily Blue are the final two in the quartet of um, Raven Cycle books by Maggie Stiefvater. Um, I've been talking about these books for a couple months before this as well now as I started reading them and um, I think I've been reading her book, oh, I started reading her books this year actually. I read a couple of her um, 
one-off books um, like All the Crooked Saints and um, another one that I can't remember the title of. And then I started to read the uh, Raven Cycle um, Quartet and fell in love with them. I, I really, really, really love the character development. I really adore the way that the series ended. Um, there was a couple of plot twists that came that I had not been expecting, but was delighted by uh, when they finished. By the way, Blue Lily Lily Blue is book number three. The Raven King is book number four, just in case you were curious. Um, <clears throat> it's just every book there is a new overarching obstacle along with some of the little ones and the story unfolds brilliantly along the way each book covers roughly a quarter of the year as um, it goes along and I really feel like each book does an amazing job of getting you further into the story without making you bored um, about how long some things are taking to have happen. So really recommend it. If you have read any of her other books and enjoyed them, these make great, great fiction books. Um, and uh, yeah, they're young adult too, so they're not these really intense, difficult to read books, yet the plot is deep enough for those of you who really like a really good, well-written story, you can get into them. It's, it's quite easy to do that. I am nearly done my um, book of the month for Stellar Tarot's book club. Side note, if you did not know, I have a book club Facebook group uh, that you are welcome to join. It is free for anyone to join. Just search just that, Stellar Tarot's book club. There's also a link in the description box below. Um, and just request an ad. And um, every month we focus on one uh, spiritually related book um, in some capacity either it is psychology and self-care or, or self-help type books or it's tarot or it's witchy themed in some capacity and this month is unfuck yourself get out of your head and into your life by Gary John Bishop um, really have liked this book it is simple it is concise but it is powerful and if you find that you struggle with negative thought patterns and if you struggle with wallowing in self-pity and self-loathing and feeling really depressed about how things are going in your life i do think that this book is a really good first step for helping you to get out of that and start living again and coupled with the fact that I have been doing my planning with my Evo planner and getting more accomplished, I feel like this book has been um, a really good, shall we say, kind of like a backup singer in the chorus to the Evo planner. The Evo planner has been the lead singer, the star of the show, the one that's really been helping me to feel better and to think better about things. This book has been a wonderful backup dancer. You would miss some of the depth and some of the oomph that backup singers can give. Did I say backup dancer before? If I did, I meant singer. But this kind of gives it that depth and that soul that you would miss if you just had one single person singing a song by themselves on the stage. The backup singers really add a flavor to it, and this book has for my month of November as well. Um, I would say that if you're somebody who is struggling with really hardcore depression right now, and you're having a really hard time stepping out of negative thought patterns, um, if you're really not wanting to focus on how you yourself can be contributing to your own problems, this might not be the book you want to start with. Um, I would say that this is more for people who are in that mindset way, where they are willing to start looking themselves hard in the eyes, in, in the mirror, and really to take a good look at how they are affecting themselves in a negative way. If you are not ready to do that yet, you may find this book will probably make you want to chuck it across the room. You have to be willing, picking up this book, to, to know that you are your own worst enemy and to know that you and your head and your thought patterns are your own worst problems right now and they are what you need to tackle first if you want to make a big difference. If you can't do that yet, I would not pick this book up. So that's like my little my little disclaimer, my little caveat here. It is a fantastic read. Um, 
but only if you're in the right headspace for it. The last book that I have to share with you is another fiction book, and it's one I've been waiting a couple of years now to read, and that is Kate Morton's The Clockmaker's Daughter. Um, I don't think I've talked much about Kate Morton on my channel before, even when I've been talking about some of my favorite um, books and authors, because it's not really spiritually related. Um, Kate Morton writes some really fantastic contemporary fiction. I would classify them as a mystery. There's always some sort of mystery to unpick and unravel throughout the book. Um, but they are almost always told from different viewpoints and from even across uh, large um, gaps in time. So you will have the perspective of people as the things are happening and then you will have the perspective of people sometimes decades, a century, generations later, trying to unpick it from the modern standpoint. Um, they are, for the most part, non-violent type of mysteries. You're not going to be finding a whole lot of um, violence in them. You will have references sometimes to violent things having happened, like if somebody was shot dead, and that's part of the story. But it's not generally the thing that a person is focusing on, and it's not generally the, the main part of the mystery. It's not a whodunit, uh, not in that sense. Um, so all of her books have this overarching theme of what is going on here, but it's told from multiple viewpoints. So you really get this kaleidoscope of story from times, from perspectives, from personalities, and you don't just have one main character you often have several main characters. And the funny thing is, is that a lot of the times, the people who, like the, the main focus of the book, the main character that the mystery is trying to unravel throughout it, you won't even hear from them. It is oftentimes the story is told from all the people around them and all the people that kind of get involved in their stories, you know, decades later. I just think they are so fantastic. Um, the Clockmaker's Daughter, I mean, like, I, I even struggle to pick a favorite because that would be really hard. They're all written in a very similar fashion, but all the stories are very different and all of the endings are very different. And, you know, normally if I'm reading a mystery, usually no longer than like halfway through the book, I'll usually have a good idea of who did it. And their motive and sometimes I might miss one or the other of those things but often I have a pretty good idea of what I think is going to happen. Her book keeps me guessing, her books keep me guessing from start to end because she just doesn't give you enough information to fill in all the gaps along the way. It's not till you get to those last few chapters that all of it really sinks in and you finally understand all of the stuff that the book has been alluding to which has been making you think one thing along the way and then you find out something completely different I, there's nothing else i can say about it except go and try to read one of her books they're fantastic so i knew that the clockmaker's daughter was in the works i saw on her social media that she was writing again um, i didn't know what the title was until a while ago when it came out in hardcover and I wanted to read it so bad, but I won't buy her books in hardcover. There's just not enough room on my shelves for all of my favorite authors to be purchased in hardcover. So I usually have to wait that extra six months to a year before they're available in paperback. And wait I did, and so far I have not been disappointed in the wait. I've only been reading it for a couple of days, and already I'm a little past halfway through it. And uh, we're going to get a few few more chapters in a little later tonight after the kiddos are in bed so yeah definitely a fantastic read I will let you know um, I'll just kind of give you a quick uh, yes I loved it worth it kind of uh, recap at the end of December so that is everything for my favorites guys I just wanted to quickly mention here um, before I go that you guys may have noticed I've been keeping to a pretty regular upload schedule for the last couple of months or so. And that upload schedule is going to end as of now. Um, 
I have been going pretty hard with the videos and really putting out a lot of content out there. And as much as I'm loving it, I'm also finding that working to put that much content out is taking away from some of the time that I'd like to spend with my family. So instead of doing three videos a week, I'm going to be going down to two. So my upload schedule is going to be on Sundays and on Wednesdays with the occasional extra video added in here and there, especially if there's a Sabbath or if there is some sort of special thing that I get up to, like an interview with someone. Witchcrafting Wednesday is also going to be changing in the new year. For December, I'm going to upload three Witchcrafting Wednesday videos that are Yule themed, and then I will be taking a break from videos entirely for the week of Christmas. So from the Sunday to the Saturday, there will be no videos the week of Christmas. There will be one up just before the new year, and we'll continue with that schedule after that of two videos a week, a third sometimes, uh, if there is reason for it. Um, the reason I'm going to take a break from the videos for the Christmas holidays, I hope is obvious. Um, I'd like to enjoy it with my family and not have to worry about getting videos uploaded and all that stuff. I really just want to have a week of just decompressing. The shop will still be open for that week. You will still be able to purchase things from me. I will still be shipping things. I will still be doing readings, but I will not have to worry about uh, getting any videos up for that week and that is what I really just wanted to make sure that I do is give myself that bit of breathing space to really properly drop in and enjoy it. Um, I do plan to do a pretty obvious but very enjoyable uh, haul video from, from my Christmas presents and my Yule presents as um, my, uh, you know, the first video after the Christmas holidays thing. So if you are curious which decks or which types of witchy things I get as gifts this year, you will be able to see that video right after Christmas. So um, yeah, guys, I just thank you so much for hanging in here for such a long video. Uh, as I said, November was pretty darned eventful and industrious and I've really been enjoying it and um, we will see you guys all in the next video. Please let me know what your favorites from the month have been in the comments if you'd like to add that and we'll see you guys soon. Bye!